everyone, and welcome to another YouTube exclusive from the Podcast Wrestling Society. I am, as always, your loving leader, benevolent host and Midwest monster, Troy Adams. And with me today is the guy I always talk WWE either in the future or in the past with. He is Kyle. What is up, Kyle? What's going on? Well, obviously, you and I are here today to talk the first ever all-women's pay-per-view, at least in the WWE, called Evolution. It's been done, people, before in Impact or TNA, whatever the hell you want to call it. Uh, But in WWE, it's the first one ever. Evolution. It's coming up. There's a lot to unpack with this show already. Uh, there is a unfortunate story about someone you're a big fan of. Uh, she may or may not be at the show, according to Uncle Dave and a few other sources. But we'll get into that. First of all, it's been a big week in WWE, man. Yeah, it's been crazy. I mean, this, especially on this, uh, especially on the what we're all this week, and I don't think anybody had any, Ugh. you know hopes of this being like a big uh a big show but it really was yeah well i mean obviously the beginning is the most noteworthy you know the opening of the show and everything and we'll get into that in a second but the show itself i thought was fairly good um one of the better raws i've seen in a while i thought smackdown was pretty pretty decent uh but yeah i full disclosure i don't watch raw live i was probably sitting there watching a movie or something or no I, I'm, I'm sorry I was watching uh, The Walking Dead because I was sick on Sunday so I didn't get to watch it so I caught up with it on Monday uh, while Raw was on and Greg texted me and he's freaking out uh, it's like during the opening of the show and he's like dude I'm like so upset right now like for real and I'm like what's wrong and he's like well do you want me to tell you it's the beginning of Raw I said, yeah, sure, go for it. And he said, Roman Reigns has leukemia, and he's surrendering the title. And I was like, what the hell? So I instantly get online, and I'm looking at, like, Twitter and everything else, and people are just, like, freaking out. I watched the opening of the show. I got choked up. I'm like, wow. I just, I, I couldn't believe it. Roman Reigns has freaking leukemia, and I didn't know that was the reason why he stop playing football. Like, I don't know. I thought he just stopped playing and decided to be a wrestler. But, uh, no, according to him, he's had leukemia for 11 years and he couldn't play football because of it. So he became a wrestler. It's just, it's, that's crazy. Um, but all our well wishes to him and his family. And I hope he, uh, I hope he kicks out here real soon. Kicks out and uh, Superman punches and spears cancer. Oh yeah, that'd be nice. Yeah, this is the uh... yeah. So this is the second bout that he's had with it, and he's only one of his early thirties. Well, uh, he he'd be thirty three according to the timeline he was laying out. So yeah, that's great because he said he was diagnosed when he was twenty two. And he said he's been living with it for 11 years, so that's just, wow. That's terrible. I just, uh, I, don't think, I don't know what to say. I don't think I've ever seen a more real promo from anybody. Yeah. I mean, he, he even completely broke character and even said, like, he even said, you know, he said something like, you know, my real name is Joe. I mean, how often do you hear a yeah. wrestler do that? Yeah, I know. It was it was a surreal moment. Um, I hope this is going to be in a highlight package shown in the future when he makes his triumphant return later this year, you know, having beaten cancer, and he returns to the ring. That's what I'm really hoping for, and I hope the crowd just blows up for him. Ah, I'd be really crazy. surprised if it was later this year. I mean, it'd be great to see, but... I think it's yeah. a long ride on the bat, unfortunately. I don't know. I've seen some people, you know, it doesn't take that long. I've seen some people, they battle with it for years. So, I, I mean, I really hope he 
you know, he, I guess he, you know, he was taking pictures from the hospital on Tuesday. He was getting treatments already. So, uh, you know, hopefully it's, it's fast acting. I, I'm, I'm sure WWE is compensating him and helping him out. Uh, I really hope so. You know, I've, I've heard, you know, they take care of people like that usually. So, especially since, you know, he's a top guy on the roster right now, I'm sure they're, you know, helping out any way they can. And I was happy to hear that the, you know, the, the, the reaction from the crowd. Yeah. Because yeah. we all know, I mean, Reigns is the most, you know, probably the most polarizing person in WWE today. And right. we all know there's a lot of sick and twisted people who claim that they're wrestling fans. You know what I've been seeing all over Twitter and Instagram and Facebook? Everybody, I'm, I'm getting so tired of this, and it's all, you know, middle-aged men who have never seen a woman naked and all this other stuff, all saying this stuff of, uh, well, you know, I'm still going to boo Roman Reigns, but, you know, I hope Joe, uh, Jan- Joe Nye, you know, pulls out. And I'm like, oh, give me a break. Like, just, just stop being a mark for five minutes. The guy has really? cancer. He has a wife and kids. It's the same guy. You can't, oh, oh, I don't like his wrestling, so screw him. Like, good Lord. Like, I, I, I'm i so sick and tired of the marks online. Like, they get worse and worse by the day. Oh, you and me both. And that's a different story. Uh, you know, it is kind of ironic that uh, on the podcast, Greg and I have been doing the uh, Russo era in WCW Today, uh, I am posting part four of that. We have at least one more part to go. Uh, it's a lot to unpack with the Russo era. There's just so much crap. We're breaking it down week by week. If you guys haven't been keeping up, it's good stuff. Go check it out. Uh, parts one through four are up when you're hearing this video. And, you know, we all know what Russo was all about. And at the end of the show this week on Raw, Rollins and Ambrose win the tag titles, and then swerve, bro. Ambrose turns heel, just beats the snot, literally beat the snot out of Seth Rollins because he kept having to wipe his nose. Uh, so that was that was crazy, and I know you were saying the same thing. I, I I've seen other people say it. Uh, they're like, well, why did he have to turn heel on this show? And it's like, well, because for that reason exactly, because people are gonna say that. Because everybody's like, oh, wait, he, he ruined the feel-good moment, whatever. It's like, exactly. He's going to get nuclear heat for this. It worked. I mean, him turning heel any other time, he was probably going to get cheered. Kind of like Becky. But this, he's getting booed. For sure. And it's sad that WWE has to do stuff like that to trick its audience. But its audience is made up of a lot of marks. So... It is what it is, I guess. I think the bigger question is, why would they put the tag belts on them if they're going to just have Ambrose turn? Ugh, I know. I'm so tired of the feuding tag champ storyline. It's been yeah, overdone. Right. Once in a blue moon, okay, but I was just like, ugh, they do it too much, I, in my opinion. But whatever. Uh, none of this stuff, by the way, you will hear anything, because we do cover a just a couple of stories uh, at the beginning of the podcast. We did not cover any of this because Greg and I record before Raw and SmackDown, so none of this stuff was news by the time we recorded. Uh, the you know, So you're not going to hear any of this talk on the podcast, which is why uh, I wanted Gr- uh, Kyle and I to break it down just, just a little bit here on the, the opening of the video. Now, uh, I think it's time to get into some evolution. But before we do, I just want to let everybody know that uh, you should definitely thumbs up this video and others go check out the others that we have, you know, uh, YouTube exclusives as well as the archived podcast episodes. Go check them out. Thumbs up. Subscribe and tick the little bell so that you are notified at all times when we upload content, which is weekly. And you're going to want to do that before next week because, you know, not to throw out spoilers here. But next week is the week of All Hallows' Eve, Halloween. And we are going to bring you a lot of Halloween-themed content next week. We have some 
Halloween Havoc watch along episodes of the well, I can't say the best matches in Halloween Havoc history because they're not. They uh but it's funny and it's good stuff. It's WWE Network watch alongs and some good Halloween exclusive content for uh for the holiday. All right. Yeah, uh, you ready to dive into Evolution, Kyle? Yes, I am. All right. Well, first of all, WWE has confirmed the commentary team for the show. It is Michael Cole, Renee Young, and Beth Phoenix, which were the commentary team for the May Young Classic this past year. You know, I could have really done without Michael Cole. He doesn't have to be on every show. Yeah. I mean, you had a feeling he would be there, though. Oh, uh, they always got to jackhammer him in there. I mean, I am kind of surprised they didn't go with, like, an all-female team. I mean, they could have put, like, Charlie Caruso or somebody in there as well. Just friggin', they could add Renee Young and Beth Phoenix. Boom. That's it. You don't have to have uh, Renee Young, Beth Phoenix, oh, and Michael Cole. No, you don't need to have Michael Cole. Screw him. Get him out of there. But whatever. Uh, you know, WWE always has to throw him in because he's their voice, I guess. <laughs> I find it I find it kind of cool. You know, we're talking about this evolution pay-per-view. Um Remember, the, remember, we actually got to witness the announcement of this pay-per-view back in the July in Cincinnati. We did, yep. At the U.S. Bank Arena. It was, uh, it was cool. And, you know, seeing highlights of, you know, seeing clips of that on TV, it's like I was there. Yep. So I, that's always cool to see. But, yeah, so it was a big night. Uh, this is going to be a big night. One of the stories, uh, before we dive into the actual show here, the, the one that I alluded to, supposedly uh, at a house, ma- er, house match, house show match over the weekend, Alexa Bliss was taking on Ronda Rousey and got injured and may not be able to make it to the Evolution pay per view. You know, she was at a withdrawal this past week, so I yeah. was wondering what was up with that. Uh, she either. There are conflicting reports. Either A, she has a broken nose, which if that's the case, you know, she can wear a face mask or something and she can wrestle. Or she has a concussion, and if that is the case, it is up in the air whether or not she'll be there. Oy, it's uh, not good, bad. Especially they've been since this is one of the bigger marquee matches of the show that they've been pushing really hard. It's not just a throwaway that, you know, you can have later on. Yeah, it's supposed to be her and Mickey James taking on Trish Stratus with Alita. Mm-hmm. And would they throw in there as a replacement, Alicia Fox? I mean, yeah, it looks like. I, sh- that Alicia. is not comparable. No, no offense to Alicia, but good God. Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, I mean, Alicia Fox wasn't even involved in the build of this thing at all. So, I nope. mean, it's like... Well, it, you gotta say it right, Kyle. It is Alicia Fox. Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> Sorry, that's the only thing I miss about that storyline. Everything else, get it out of here. But, uh, I don't know, the way he said that, just, I loved it. It's kind of like when Tony Chimmel says, the rated R superstar. Which like, is great to hear it back that one down from last week. I oh, say. God. Yeah, I, I laughed, but at the same time, I roll my eyes. Because, like, every time, even at the Hall of Fame, had to have it. Well, uh, this show is taking place on Sunday, October 28th in Uniondale, New York at the Nassau Coliseum. It, uh, <laughs> it's being sponsored by K Jewelers. Go figure. Is that a little sexist that the all-women's pay-per-view is being sponsored by a jewelry company? Uh, I don't know. I mean, a little bit. A little bit. I don't know. I mean, it's funny, if you know, if nothing else. Uh, the theme song I think, is. I think W. I think WWE Two K Nineteen is also one of the sponsors of the, of the show. Uh yeah, it so is. It is. Yeah, but uh, it's it's K Jewelers and WWE Two K Nineteen. But uh, yeah, I just thought that was funny. Uh, the theme song is "Salute" by Little Mix. For what that's worth, let's dive into the actual card here and make some predictions. Uh, first of all, I have not 
watch the May Young Classic tournament this I, year. I haven't either. So. I need to go back and watch it uh, at some I point. Had time to do it yet. It's a little hard this week to uh, have free time to watch it because uh, the wife is home with me all week, and uh, yeah, so I, I'm trying to find some free time to throw and do it. Maybe in the next couple of days, since I have the day off and whatnot. So we'll see. But uh, I, I I like some of the talent they had in that, but uh, given that we can see the full card for this, it's kind of ruined who's you know going to be in the finals here. The uh, let's dive into some of the singles matches we got. Io Shirai will take on Tony Storm. The uh, in the May Young Classic Tournament Finals. I love both of these women, so I don't know. I the 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 inaugural May Young Classic was won by uh, brand new Japanese superstar. Uh, Kyrie Sane. Do you think they're going to repeat with Io Shirai, or do you think they're going to have Tony Storm win it? Um, I think they'd be better off having Tony Storm win it, that way, they, just so they don't like repeat everything. Yeah. Um. I mean, I I like them both. Uh, I think both women have great upside to them. Whatever. I I wouldn't mind seeing Tony Storm win it. Uh, I'm trying to, I, I don't know, because right now it says, uh, the, the, I think I'm going to pick Tony Storm as well, so, I don't know, but I, I'm trying to figure out, because uh, they have Rhea Ripley versus To Be Determined for the NXT UK Women's Championship. Uh, Rhea Ripley is another one that I love for multiple reasons, but that's beside the point. I don't know who the to be determined is going to be. I'm not seeing anything about who her opponent is because I have not watched the uh, the UK show yet. I'm really behind, so I I don't know. But I don't. Should we even make a pick for that one? Because we don't even know who she's facing. Uh, but. I know. I mean, just because they don't have all the information, it's kind of hard to. Right. Well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna assume Rhea is gonna retain because it's like her first defense of the damn thing. But I, I, or at least on pay per view. But I don't know. But we'll move on. Uh, next, we've got man, we've got all the women's titles on the line because the NXT UK Women's Championships on the line. Then the NXT Women's Championship is on the line. Kyrie Sane defends against Shayna Baszler. Who are you calling for this one? Um, I'm going to say they keep it on, uh, on Kyrie Sane right now. Yeah, I would, uh, I would think that, I don't know, I, I would think that Sheena might get called up soon, but then again, I've been saying that for a while. I don't know, I guess we'll just have to wait and see. But yeah, I'm going to call Kyrie Sane retaining in this one, uh, She's gotten the better of Shayna mo- uh, multiple times, and I don't think this one will be any different. We'll get to the, the, the two big matches here in a bit, but as it stands right now, we've got Trish Stratus and Lita versus Alexa Bliss and Mickey James. If the match goes as planned, who you call in here? Uh, if the match goes as planned, I'm going to say Alexa Bliss and uh, Mickey James, just because... Wow. Just because Trish and Lita, I don't think they're going to do anything after this pay-per-view. I think they're only in here for, you know, just for the evolution of it. I don't think we're going to see them for a while after this. So, usually if you're on your way out for a while, you do the honors for your opponent and yeah. work with that logic. Yeah, I mean, that could be the case. Um, I'm going to pick Trish and Lita just because... You know, you want to see the legends come back and conquer and whatever. And I mean, WWE doesn't always do that, but I don't know. And I think uh, Trish has a few more in the tank. Lita, I I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. She's had a lot of neck issues, but Trish is perfectly healthy. And uh, I mean, I, her and Lita still look great, obviously. But I think Trish, uh, 
I think Trish could could go a little more. I think she's willing to to go a little more too. So I think this could, if she wins, this could set something up. I mean, she loses, that could set something up too. But I'm really banking on Trish and Lita getting the win. Yeah, I mean, I, I hope they do. It would just be cool to see, but uh, we'll see what happens. Right. Uh, well, then we've got uh, Sasha Banks, Bailey, and Natalia versus the Riot Squad. Liv Morgan, Sarah Logan, and Ruby Riot. Six women tag match. Oh, yeah. On one side, you've got the Riot Squad, and on the other side, you've got the BFFs, the Boss and Hug Connection, ugh, uh, and the Cat Lady. Which, don't get me wrong, I love Natalia, but that's what she's known as, basically, is the friggin' Cat Lady. What the, well, like, why? I don't know, it's a random pairing. Let's put all the baby faces together, because reasons. <laughs> Who you calling here? I'm going to say the Riot Squad. I think they need a big win here, and I think I would do it for them. Yeah, I'm hoping, uh, especially after they just got embarrassed at the... Uh, I mean, you know, they lost to, you know, the women's champs, so nothing too, too bad. But, you know, they got whooped at a Super Showdown. Yeah, when two of them are put in the arm bar at the same exact time, I mean... Yeah, yep. Well, I think they need to. Uh, I think they need to get the win here, and I think it would be great. And you can't have all baby faces all night, so give right. them a win. Next up, we got the battle royal. Uh, right now, there have there are officially twenty one confirmed women. There may be more, but I don't know. So <laughs> this is like you know they had. They had, you know, two men's Royal Rumbles in one year, so now they're going to have two women's, I guess, even though it's just called a Battle Royal. You know, uh, I had a feeling they were going to do a match like this. They were advertising, of, what did they say, like over 50 women from the past present? Yeah, yeah. When when Stephanie said that, I was like, they're going to have to have a Battle Royal. They're Like, there's no other way around it. Yeah. And it looks interesting. The uh, the lineup so far. They on the Raw side, so far announced we've got Tamina, Ember Moon, Alicia Fox, Nia Jax, Dana Brooke, and Maria Kanellis. I guess she's still considered Raw. On the SmackDown side, we got Billy Kay, Peyton Royce, Asuka, uh, Mandy Rose, Sonya Deville, Carmella, Lana, and Naomi, and then the Legends. Or, uh, well, one of them I wouldn't consider her a legend, but a uh, former wrestler. Uh, and that one is Kelly Kelly. She is confirmed. <laughs> uh, Molly Holly, Ivory, Alundra Blaze, which will be yeah. cool to see. Uh, Michelle McCool and Tori Wilson. Ah, man. A lot of, uh, a lot of beautiful women in this match, I'm telling you. Oh, yeah. So uh, this is going to be the second best looking battle royal in WWE history. The first, obviously, <laughs> being this past Women's Royal Rumble. Then I guess you can consider that uh, Miss WrestleMania battle royal. That that wasn't a bad looking battle royal either. But either way, I'm also wondering: Are they all going to? Is it going to be like a traditional battle royal where they're all they all start in the ring, or are they going to enter at, at different intervals? I don't know. I must say. Probably a traditional battle royal they all yeah. start. I mean, it's at different intervals. That's essentially a Royal Rumble match, so. Yeah, but like I said, they did two men's in one year, so maybe they'll do two women's. But yeah, I, th I think they'll probably all start in the ring. That kind of screws any chance of, like, a um, a surprise or something, you know what I mean? It's like they're right out there to begin with, but either way. Well, I mean, there could be. I remember... WrestleMania, what was it, two years ago when Shaquille O'Neal was a surprise in Trent DeAndre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal? Yeah, that was random. Well, uh, I don't know. Who 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 are you going to call for this one? I, I think it's really any like up in the air for anybody. I'm going Ember Moon. Just the, the way they've been hyping it on Raw, she's been... You know, she's got a lot of momentum going into this thing. I think they're going to give it to her, which I would be totally cool with. 
Yeah, I mean, I have no problem with Ember Moon winning it. I think it would be great. I am going to pick her, but I also think it would be cool just for a nostalgia pop to give the win to Alundra Blaze. Well, I mean, the winner of the match is going to get a women's title shot. Hey, she can get a women's title shot. I don't know. I mean, it, <laughs> I mean, it would be cool, but yeah, I yeah. don't know. Uh, I'm going to say it comes down to Amber Moon and Oscar. We're going to rekindle that rivalry a little bit. Uh, Yeah, and I think Nia Jax will be in there towards the end as well. And I'm trying to think, man, if Michelle McCool has another showing where she just like starts whooping on fools, like I'd like to see Alundra actually do something and not just like have like two hits and then get thrown out. Yeah. yeah, I always hate when they do that, you know, but I don't know. And she's in great shape still, so I'm sure she can, you know, have a bit of a showing. But all right. Well, yeah, I, I completely forgot that the winner gets a championship match, but. Whatever, I assume it's Survivor Series, right? Or did they just uh, say... They haven't oh, really... They, they haven't said. They just said a future women's title shot. Yeah. Could be Survivor Series for all we know, so... Yeah, I don't know. But all right, well, now we go down to the final two matches here announced on the card. It is the women's... The uh, main roster women's title matches. The first one... Ronda Rousey versus Nikki Bella, even though it shouldn't be closing the show, it probably will because it's Raw and it's Nikki frickin' Bella and Ronda Rousey. So, who do you got for this one? Oh, boy. I see two potential outcomes here. You know, Ronda just annihilates her. Which I'd be fine with that. Would make the most sense, but another thing I could definitely see Stephanie the man getting involved and screwing over on the Rousey. Ugh, the thing I don't yeah. know is like how long is Nikki Bella gonna be, you know, gonna be in, you know, gonna gonna be there. I hope like, not long. Be, like is she gonna be clawed after Evolution? I don't know. It seems like her and Brie want to stick around a little bit, but I, you, you can never tell with those two. And, you know, Nikki's been trying to up her stock ever since the women's Royal Rumble, you know, when she was, like, the last, you know, one of the last two. It was down to her at Oscars, yeah. Yeah. Hmm, I don't know. I, I really, if she wins, I'm going to be super upset. Like, that's just going to piss me the hell off. She doesn't deserve to win, like, at all. No. But whatever the but hell. They just recently turned for however many times they've done it. I think them and the big show have turned more than anybody. The Bella Twins, that is. So. Yeah. Oh, you can't trust the Bella you know Twins. What? I'm, I'm, I'm going to be ballsy here. I'm going to say Stephanie McMahon gets involved and costs uh, Rousey the title just to draw some more heat on the Bellas. Ugh. Yuck. Well, whatever. I'm going to go opposite wishful thinking. I think Ronda Rousey deserves to win here. I'm going to call her. I think it would be stupid to have the freaking Nikki Bella beat her, but they act like she's some world beater. I mean, she held that damn Divas title for, like, over a year. That's stupid. But anyway. All right, and this is the match I feel should be closing the show. It is a last woman standing match. They built this damn thing up incredibly. It's for the women's uh, SmackDown Women's Championship, Becky Lynch defends against Charlotte Flair. Who are you calling with this? Uh, this is the hardest one to call, I think. I really think Becky needs to win this one. I mean, I guess she doesn't need to, but I really want her to. Yeah. She's been having a great title reign. She has, and uh, I hope it continues. Charlotte doesn't if, need the title uh, again right now. No. And this should end the feud if Becky comes out on top here. Because yeah. Charlotte wins, and there'll be another rematch. And, which I'd be okay with. I've said on here, I don't... That's just... I, I'd never... Complain seeing a match between Charlotte and Becky because those two always tear the house down. Yeah. I'm going to say Becky retains here. 
not confident in that pick because I could really see this going either way. But mm. Yeah, I'm going to call Becky. So, like I said, I'm really hoping that holds up and she uh, she retains her title. I'm a big Becky Lynch fan, and I... I want to see her get. Uh, I want to see her beat Charlotte. Like Charlotte's been champion a million times already. Like, just give it a rest for a little bit. That's all I'm asking. But I don't know. We shall see. I guess. But that about wraps it up for WWE Evolution Crown Jewel. And this is only a. Like what a week away, a week or like a week and a half away, something yep. like Friday, November second. Uh, well, for you and I, it will be uh, Saturday. Well, well, yeah, it says Friday, November second, twelve noon, Eastern. Okay, yeah, I guess so. So weird. I guess it's better than last time. Last time, uh, it was at like what five a.m. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, stupid. I don't know, but. Going to be a weird hour over in Saudi Arabia. It's going to be after midnight by the time they start that show, I believe. I don't know, Saudi Arabia time. Real quick, the only non-WWE thing I wanted to touch on real quick while I'm seeing it. This has just popped up since I recorded with Greg. The NWA has announced something pretty big. For anybody that knows classic NWA, they are bringing back the Crockett Cup next year. Uh, I'm going to read this story here off of uh, figure, Wrestling Observer Figure 4 online real quick. The Crockett Cup will be making its return next year. Road Warrior Animal made the announcement after the team he was managing, uh, Jax, Dane, and Crimson, defeated the Kingdom of Josephus, which is Chan and Moore and Crazy Steve. There wasn't a specific date for the return of the tournament other than it would be held in 2019. It will be held in association with with the Crockett Foundation, which helps provide service to military veterans with mental disorders. The tournament ran for three years in the 1980s under Jim Crockett promotions, first starting in 1986. The Road Warriors won the inaugural tournament with the superpowers, Dusty Rhodes and Nikita Koloff, winning in 1987. The last tournament held in 1988 was a team of Lex Luger and Sting defeating Arn Anderson and Tully Blanchard in the finals, in the past, the tournament was held under single elimination rules consisting of 24 uh, teams, although 22 teams in 1988. There you go. A big classic tag team tournament of the past is returning, and the best thing is it benefits charity. There you go. Anybody that's a classic NWA, WCW fan or a fan of Jim Crockett promotions, there you go for what it's worth. Quite a time to be alive and be a wrestling fan, I'll say. Oh, yeah. Big league news. Huge big league. Either way, we. <laughs> I know this video's ran a little long, but, you know, there was some news to cover outside of just the Evolution pay per view itself, which we have brought to you. That's the kind of services we provide here at uh, Podcast Wrestling Society. Like I said, definitely subscribe and tick the little bell down below and like our videos. That will help us out a lot, and it will keep you informed and entertained. Kyle, you will be on the actual podcast next week where we will run down what exactly the hell happened at Evolution and the Raw oh, and yeah. SmackDown following it. Should be a fun week. It's going to be huge. They're going to have the best women on the roster. The best people at this show going to be big league. I'm sorry, I, I've already abused the Donald Trump impression. Anyway, it's another thing we do uh, on the podcast. And if you have not heard the podcast, definitely go check it out. Uh, go to our Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram pages. The handle is at Pod Rest Society, P O D W R E S Society, and you can listen to. The podcast, we have it pinned to the top of our page. And on Instagram, it's right there. Plain as day, easy to find. So go check it out. 
Thank you for joining me again today, Kyle. That is not a problem. And we will holler at you all later. Thanks for watching this YouTube exclusive video for the podcast Wrestling Society. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons if you're picking up what we're throwing down. And of course, we always welcome feedback in the comments section down below. And if you want to keep up with the weekly podcast that drops every Wednesday, links to the show page are in the description down below, along with our social media handles and our associates pages. Come on and join the society.